next presentation uh, will be the 10 Guru uh, Sahibs, the attributes, lives, and contributions. So we'll delve a little deeper uh, with Indabreet Singh, who will be coming back to do our presentation um, on the 10 Gurus and their, and their lives. Um, Indabreet Singh is uh, someone that uh, has uh, been instructing at Civic for quite a number of years with the Key 101. Um, and uh, was, I would say, probably my uh, first instructor into Asakiva um, and delving deeper into the meaning of Asakiva as well as um, the uh, Surbhat Khalsa workshop that I, I had the pleasure of being a part of when Indabrit Singh first came to, to Surrey uh, to do a presentation here. And so, um, as I said, all of these instructors are people that I have become friends with and uh, and made connections with, and and a huge part of that is how they're able to um, invite us into learning into in such an incredibly warm and inviting space. So um, I am absolutely positive that you will enjoy this presentation by In the Breed Singh as he delves into the ten Gusaves. So I will turn it over to you. Um. So as I go through this presentation, uh, we won't have a breakout session or jam boards, but I do strongly, strongly encourage any kind of engagement through the chat. I'll keep an eye on the on the chat and any questions or even any comments like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. That was good. Or come on. It's or, I, I already knew that. Keep going. <laughs> Either way. Right. I, I, I would I would definitely love love some engagement. So. When we. Um, talk about the idea of guru, right? Connecting with the one light. So guru, one light, which is ikonkar, um, the actual guru saiban, they're, they're, it's a multi-dimensional kind of uh, view that we want to take for this idea of guru. Guru is so central to our six lives. I think it behooves us to really, again, not be analytical and just kind of academic uh, about it, but a, a pragmatic kind of broad-based approach of every lens that we can look at the guru at. So I sometimes, I mean, I feel internally as well, people call me a history buff. So so this is kind of the historical lens uh, of, of the guru, but not just that, right? And, and that's what I'm, I'm kind of going to be covering is that you look at a historical lens of the guru, you look at the Shabad lens of the guru, you look at the Panthic lens of the guru, right? All of these, but but not in isolation. So, however, you know, we can't be doing things simultaneously. So we have to break up into the, these different sections. We kind of covered this, and this is you're going to be hearing about this constantly. There's Shabad Guru, there's ten gurus, there's Guru Granth Sahib, there's Guru Khalsa Panth, all are connected to the one light ikonkar, the one force. But in the context of the guru personas, I call it guru persona, guru personality, you know, uh, vyakti guru uh, in, in Punjabi, sometimes uh, we hear that. Um, we have a fundamental problem constantly, either culturally or um, on purpose, quote unquote, by, by detractors of, of, of the six. We separate out the gurus as oh guru nanak was different guru angad sahib was different um and uh i like i'm going to read this but i, I like sharing a, a, a very simple <laughs> it is a joke it's not it's not true but it, it kind of is true right um in the bazaars of amritsar uh there's this uh shopkeeper who has and this you see that a lot they have two paintings of the guru guru nanak sahib on the back and guru gobind singh ji on um Two, two different flash pictures, right? I'm not advocating pictures or paintings of the gurus, but but as is the culture, people haggle, right? And every time some customer comes to this shopkeeper and says, teek, teek, lagana, meaning please make sure you price it correctly. And uh, every time this the shopkeeper, he points at the pit, at the painting of Guru Nanak and says, song guruji, right? Again, I'm not advocating swearing upon the guru or pictures, I'm getting a point across, which I find very um, uh, funny slash serious. Um, and a, a, a bystander notices that whenever someone comes and tries to haggle with him, he always, all he does is says song guruji and he points only at the, at the painting of Guru Nanak. 
And why doesn't he point at the painting of Guru Gobind Singh? And so the bystander comes up and asks, you know, Surinder Singh, like, to see why why are you only doing the song of Guru Nanak and not of Guru Gobind Singh? And he seriously replies that uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji is too strict. <laughs> Point being is that he's obviously trying to make a profit in any which way he can. So he like is pointing at Guru Nanak is the spiritual guru, is the forgiving guru. And if I do do say a lie here or there, Guru Nanak will forgive me. But Guru Gobind Singh Ji is the strict one and he won't be, uh, be forgiving. So alas, this is the, our problem is we separate out the, the, the holy and the truthful and the and the and the spiritual guru nanak and we consider guru gobind singh ji to be the the warrior and the the punjabi which the, the term used in in this quote unquote joke that i shared is is o, o guru dada the, the guru gobind singh ji is the dada guru guru nanak is the acha guru right people have the idea of 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 um favorite gurus as well right so um professor puran singh here also makes note of that in a serious way. And he says, you know, Guru Gobind Singh is the guru of the modern times and assuredly the slaves of India have not understood him so far and are not capable of understanding his genius. The shadow of his large personality falls far away above the head. It's basically Guru Gobind Singh Ji's genius is above the head of centuries and the so-called best intellectuals of India. When they spread out their mind to understand the Guru, they get bruised by mere thorns and give him up as something not as spiritual as Guru Nanak. If they cannot see Guru Gobind Singh as the highest, brightest culmination of Guru Nanak, assuredly, they do not understand the king of the revolution of the religious thought, which is the great Guru Nanak. So point being is that Guru Nanak to Guru Gobind Singh Ji was a process. It was the same process, but the circumstances of the time may have changed. Guru Nanak Sab, 1469, Guru Gobind Singh's passing, 1708, exactly like, uh, you know, 239 years or 240 years. And even if you say, okay, Guru Nanak started his Udasis and like people, uh, the, the historians have 1499 as an approximate date where, where that encounter that uh, Jasleen had mentioned. So from the age of 30, uh, it, it's, it's basically 200 years plus of this development of the community that had to take place. So the historical lens of the development of the Sikh community through the, uh, the personas of the gurus uh, but the key point that we need to not forget, even though I'm also going to go into the presentation, divide up the episodes of the different gurus, um, they're, they're all ikjot, right? It's all one universal message. This has already been covered um, essentially exactly that same slide of, of Jasleen. So remember the idea of guru is one, but the guru personas were, were, were 10. So the guru spheres of activism, um, they are def at every... Guru Saab, you will notice, and we have another um, set of slides, other workshops that Sik Sikri has done, in which we actually laid this out according to a timeline. But the religious elite of the time, or the political elite of the time, so the religious leaders and the um, political le leaders, essentially the Mughals, every guru had some kind of encounter with them. Um, but and whilst that that development of the Sikh uh, community and, and the and the Pant continues, um, Guru Saab is engaging in social um, activism um, and economic activism. And even if you even further divide it up, every Guru had some type of like family issues that occurred along the way, bringing back the human condition uh, of that. Guru Nanak Saab with Baba Sirichan. Um, Guru Angad Saab and his sons, Guru Ram, Dad, Guru Arjun Saab, and you know the Priti Chan, like it's really, really serious family feuds going on, <laughs> um, political intrigue, uh, engagement with with uh, the religious elite of the time. Guru Nanak's travels were all in engaging with the the myriad of uh, faiths and practices of, of that time. So, any historical episodes of the Guru that we kind of study in our 
starting from the beginning in in um, uh, in our like early years of Khalsa school, then going beyond, and in our just day-to-day uh, -day, uh, engagements within the Gurdwara, listening to Katha, it's it helps at least me to see. Okay, look at that. How how can we kind of match? the the sakis that we're learning to what kind of activism that, that the guru sabs were engaged with so we actually did that uh, for a lot of the different um uh stories sakis of the guru and how it relates to what are the kind of the ideas that we can use today as far as uh, uh the rights of, of, of different kinds um and i'm not going to go into every story and how that relates but you you should know that Guru Nanak Sahib engaged with Babur at, at at a particular level. He was in jail. He was actually released because of the of a, pro, a jail protest, a prisoners' protest that took on. The Sakhis are much more flowery than the way I'm putting it. But the idea of prisoners' rights that we we uh, um, know about today, Guru Nanak Sahib already uh, did that in 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 his lifetime. I love to also compare the Sakhi of what we all know today as Panja Sahib and the Walikandari and water not being allowed to go down to the to the villagers uh, of, of that area of Hassan Abdal um, as water rights. So the modern day water rights, uh, um, you know, engagement that has been plagued, plaguing Punjab for more than many, many decades, for five decades. Water rights, Guru Nanak Sahib showed and explained and, and actually engaged in those rights. The Gurmukhi script, education rights, right? The uh, religious studies or engagement in kind of written spirituality was the confines of the religious elite in Dev, Dev Nagri script and Sanskrit. Gurmukhi, formalizing that by Guru Angad Sahib was opening it up, you know, um, opening it up to, to every echelon of society, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to go into a few of these uh, one by one. Um, uh, the idea of, of having a scriptural canon, like the Guru Granth Sahib, the Ad Granth of, of our own, of, of, of the community, um, bypassing the, the, the structures of that time, the judicial structures of that time, which were, you know, centralized from the Mughal uh, Sultanate in Delhi and um, Guru, Guru Hargobind Sahib engaging in, in issues of justice. Akal Takht, that's when Guru Akal Takht that we know today was established, uh, called Akal Bunga at that time. Um, we'll cover a story of Guru uh, Har Krishan Sahib, which you may or may not know about intellectual rights and scholarship. Oops, sorry. Um, and, and, and continuing on to the Khalsa. So, looking at the episodes of the Sikh Guru's lives and tying them up to these, these things that we believe are like more modern day, uh, you know, uh, engagements or, or fights for different rights, uh, we, can, we can tie that in uh, very, very, very easily if we know, if we engage with the history uh, aspect of the Sikh Gurus as well. So let's go to, um, uh, through a few of the, the stories of the Sikhs, uh, oh, sorry, of the Gurus. Um, actually, let, let me uh, ask you in the chat if there's one story, so maybe a phrase or maybe a, a, some, some word of a story of Guru Nanak that you know or you can relate to or you, you've always thought about. Um, just share that in the, uh, before we go to each subsequent Guru, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do that. And you can do that in, in any order you want and I'll keep an eye on it. So give you 30 seconds to a minute to think of a Sakhi of Guru Nanak. You've heard of the idea of Janam Sakhi. Janam Sakhi is about Guru Nanak. And what Sakhi or what story um, that you can relate to or you've, you've thought about or engaged with in the past? When you think of Guru Nanak, what do you think of? Sid Ghost. His relationship with his sister and beautiful. And I love to make that connection with uh, Bebe Nanki and actually all uh, a few of the subsequent gurus, right? The, the recognizing of the divine within the guru or introducing 
the idea of divine to the subsequent gurus was all a result of a, 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 a woman relative um, of, of the gurus. When Guru challenges the ritual of, of offering water to the sun. Yes, very, very interesting uh, that that what what the reason why we all know so many stories of Guru Nanak is is because we focus a lot in our in our like Khalsa school or in just in our Sina Basina changing, uh, you know, like a passing on of stories of the Gurus. Uh, Guru Nanak gets gets a lot of importance. But the but the point that hopefully we'll get take out of here today is the other Gurus had had very similar type of um, stories associated with them. Like when, when the challenging of the rituals, every guru challenged rituals and very, very, in a in very, very specific way. Um, so great, you just keep keep that kind of engagement over here. And we, we, we covered a few of them. One of the things that I definitely like to cover, right, is this, this Sakya when Bailana met Guru Nanak for the first time. Um, the, uh, Pai Lanaji, who then became Guru Angad, when you, you may have heard of this, the story that uh, where uh, Pai Lanaji like really wanted to go and, and meet Guru Nanak, but was on his way to a pilgrimage of a of, of the of a goddess and uh, basically took a detour towards Kartarpur on the way to that that pilgrimage, and he meets an old man um, walking. Uh, and engages with them and ask him that I would like to go and see, meet Guru Nanak. And, Guru, and, and the old man says, oh, he's, he lives in that direction. I'll take you there. So Bailana Ji on his horse, walking to, uh, over to a hut on Guru Nanak, uh, where Guru Nanak is supposed to be staying. When he goes there, the story goes that uh, lo and behold, inside was the same old man who actually took him there. And Bailana Ji was so embarrassed and, and you know, falls on his on uh, on the feet of Guru Nanak at that time. The main takeaway I take up from that story is the picture that we get painted in our minds because of all of the paintings of Guru Nanak is Guru Nanak was always in this posture of meditating eyes half closed and with a halo around his head. If that was the case, wouldn't Bailana have recognized that uh, this seems like a, you know, like an amazing personality? Uh, the, po the point being that Guru Nanak was part of the soil. He was, he was among the people and not to be confused. I mean, who can actually go and travel the world on foot with a companion like Madonna, a musician, and not be in good shape rather than the plump Guru Nanak that we are, are either told about or at least are bombarded with images of, of Guru Nanak of the time. Languages of the people. One of the things that historians are baffled at and is the study of the Guru Granth Sahib. In the study of the Guru Granth Sahib, Guru Nanak's contribution in all of the different languages, his historical episodes where he engages with the the local people of the time in their own language so intellectual guru nanak the strong and and healthy guru nanak the the kirt karnwala the business uh, and and uh, farmer guru nanak is is things that we can take as okay in our lives today what would guru nanak do what was guru nanak like right so engaging from that level really gives us a picture of what, what the gurus were. So everything that Guru, Guru Nanak was continues on with the rest of the gurus. So I love to share that story of the meeting of Pailana. Uh, maybe some of you don't have that mindset, so I didn't want to <laughs> you know, plague it with that image, but this is an image that our kids are asking us about. Oh, that looks like Guru Nanak. There's literally uh, YouTube videos where they've animated Guru Nanak's eyes closing and opening, right, uh, in, in, and Simran in the background. So it's just really confusing if we don't really look at the, the real Guru Nanak. And there's obviously, you may have heard of that, that poem, which is why we are scared of Guru Nanak as well, because people don't want to know the real Guru Nanak. Um, so I'm going to just continue on. So next on Pailana Ji to now Guru Angad Sam. So what would you know, or what is one or two Sakhis that you know about Guru Angad Sab that um, that you would like to share? Please share it in the in the chat. Give you thirty seconds or a minute to share about Pailana Ji or, or Guru Angad Sab.
we got really good responses for Guru Nanak. I'm hoping we'll get some for the other subsequent gurus as well. We gave you a hint earlier about Gurmukhi. So I'll, I'll move to the next uh, next slide, right? Obviously, he served Guru Nanak. Um, one thing that when Pana goes for the farm for the first time and Guru Nanak puts a pond of weeds, yep, yep. When he is carrying the pot of water for Guru Nanak's bath in the early hours, yeah. So these are all by Lanaji before before he became Guru. Absolutely. One other aspect I told you I wanted to make that connection. Um, do you know that Guru, sorry, by Lanaji actually saw Guru Nanak when he was a child? Some historians write that he was able to see, and it was his bua, his aunt, who was a Sikh of Guru Nanak, who was and and basically took him to the Darbar of where Guru Nanak was near, near Kadur. It wasn't in Kadur, right? Uh, Pailana Ji had uh, been visiting his bua and he did see Guru Nanak. He was not attached to Guru Nanak at that time, right? He was probably a child, one can say, but the thing that connected him to Guru Nanak was his, his aunt, his uh, bua, his aunt, and the what it really created the desire for him to go and meet Guru Nanak and take that detour from his pilgrimage was the 20, if I'm not mistaken, 21st or 22nd party of, of Asakivar, that uh, a, a Sikh of Guru Nanak in the vicinity of Kadur was reciting in the morning. So the Shabad and uh, his aunt were like, Kind of instrumental in connecting him to Guru Nanak at that time. Something to something to uh, keep track of. Okay, he is the one. So obviously Guru Nanak had um, revealed Bani, and it is known that had the poti had had um, a poti with him in which the Gurbani was was written after the revelation that got handed over to the subsequent gurus. That is is what. Um, uh, um, is known. The Gurmukhi script, however, so it wasn't a script, but the formalization of what's called the Panthi Akri that we know today is attributed to Guru Angad Sahib at when he was Guru. And while he was Guru, he had his own personal responsibility that he was teaching Gurmukhi to the kids around now. Now Kadur started getting established as a Sikh center. While he was teaching, uh, the story goes, that Humayun, who happened to be the son of Babur, had lost the kingdom to Sher Shah Suri, came to ask for a blessing from Guru Angad Sahib to try and get his kingdom back. He came and tried to interrupt Guru, Guru Angad Sahib during the, during the uh, lesson, and Guru Sahib ignored him. He, Humayun gets angry, tries to pull out his sword, and, and Guru Angad Sahib confronts him and instructs him that you're going to be, you're going to, you're showing your bravery over here, like while I'm teaching kids, really. Um, so like, where, where was your bravery when you were fighting against uh, that? So then the engagement and he, Humayu understands and, and then continues on. Mention of Langar by the spouse of Guru Angad Sahib, Mata Kiwi, is also uh, in the Guru Granth Sahib. So the institutionalization of Langar, even though started by Guru Nanak. So all of these, these institutions begins by, with Guru Nanak and gets formalized and institutionalized by the subsequent Gurus. So uh, important two, two things is that, that also engaging with the political elite, but also back at the social, social infrastructure and social uh, things that Guru uh, Angad Saab is doing educational rights. Notice these words that uh, come along along the way. I'll be I'll be talking about that towards the end. Okay, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the time, so I'm going to skip a couple of, uh, and I'll go to the quote unquote difficult gurus that we might not know many stories about. But Guru Nanak Saab, number three, uh, Guru Amar Das Ji, also gets like introduced, or at least that that kind of sense of longing for wanting to meet the guru uh, through a woman relative in the family. Bibi Amro, who happens to be the daughter of Guru Angad Sahib, is reciting like she does every day, um, uh, Jabji Sahib, and Guru Amar Das Ji, who happens to be the in-law from an in-law family of, of Bibi Amro, 
listens to it and is enamored by it, by the by its meaning, and then gets attracted and want to meet Guru Nanak number two, Guru Angad Sahib. So beautiful connection uh, that it's all these these uh, powerful Sikh women are are kind of doing that first engagement with with the gurus um everyone knows about the idea of um women equality starts from the time obviously on guru nanak but is institutionalized so no no one is is allowed to come into the darbar of the guru with the with the parda on uh, which which remains like kind of historically today and and um it was during the time of guru amar das that that happened widow remarriage the banning of sati the establishing of manjis now the sikh community is growing and all of the distant sikh communities need to have some sort of leadership uh, uh, with it this, this is the idea of manjis and guru amar das ji in that age in that century is assigning women to be head uh, of of those communities uh, talk about the idea of equality and like breaking social structures of the caste system. Everybody knows about Gwendawal Sahib, hopefully everybody does, but it's a, it's a city and a, and a Gurdwara established by, by Guru Amar Das Ji. And it's unfortunate that today people, if we ask, will know, oh, Gwendawal Sahib, yeah, yeah, the place that has 20, uh, sorry, 84 steps and people like go on each step and they recite Jabji Sahib and it's supposed to provide liberation by going there. But the point is that there's a bauli, there is a there is a well that where you step down, rather than a straight well, it's a step down well. And because of water problems, because of this this uh, you know taboo of lower caste not able to share water with the with the upper caste, Guru Sahib establishes this and provides free access to water to all, regardless of caste. So breaking the these these caste structures. Again, starts with Guru Nanak as it's, as it's presented in Guru Nanak Sahib's Bani, but is being lived practically by Guru Amar Das Ji. Um, Guru Ram Das Ji <coughs> is the one who establishes Amritsar that we know today. So I will always try to share uh, with with uh, with in, in any of these engagements that cities are being established by our gurus. And by the time of Guru Ram Das, Baba Sri Chand is still alive. He is the son of Guru Nanak. And, um, you know, he kind of engages with, with Guru Ram Das, right? That's the family feud idea still continues. Um, that, that is occurring. And then there, there's some episodes that we, we may know about Guru Ram Das was in prior to becoming Guru. Guru Amar Das Ji chooses and Guru Ram Das Ji was an orphan. Um, he was from the area, uh, like his parents were from the area of Lahore, but then uh, during, a young, during a young age, his parents pass away and is basically uh, being, you know, like earning a living through selling chole. Kungunia is, is chole or, or uh, chickpeas around the area of Basarke. And um, Guru Amar Das Ji notices, notices him when it was time to get uh, uh, to have the, the daughter marry. The, um, and Guru Amar Das Ji's wife asks, uh, we need to find a suitable spouse. He says, how about like someone like him who, who knows how to do seva, who know, knows how to do a, earn a living and do seva at the same time. So, so uh, lots of other you know, episodes of the life of Guru Ram Das, uh, but it's phenomenal to think that Amritsar didn't exist as an established city before Guru Ram Das spent specific time in not just doing it on his own, but really, uh, you know, um, gathering the community to go and build it on our own. Um, um, he starts establishing the business areas around Amritsar Sahib, but Guru Arjan Sahib continues that work, which is the next uh, Guru. So by this time, the Sikh Panth is growing. Um, there are lots of, the family feud continues. There are lots of issues with stray, like Gurbani being presented by these schisms, these, these um, you know, British um, descendants as the real Gurbani. So um, because of, because of that scenario and understanding at the development cycle of this community that a scriptural canon is needed, Guru 
Arjun Saab embarks on the project. Uh, some historians say that the project started in 1599. So 1599 to 1604, which was the first inauguration of the Advan, um, five-year project of basically reciting of the Guru Granth Sahib through the potis that Guru Arjan Sahib had in his possession and by Gurdas Ji being the scribe of it. So 1604, again, it's not about dates and trivia, but, but, but the establishment of the Sikh scriptural canon just totally, I think in my mind, solidifies the, the sovereign and distinct uh, path that, that uh, you know started off by Guru Nanak Sahib. That really upsets both the religious and the political elite of the time. The uh, central Sikh uh, center is also set, Darbar Sahib, or known as Harmandar Sahib, in the city of Amritsar. But father establishes a city, son in the, in the form of Guru Nanak the fifth also establishes a city, Tarantan. Uh, and the the Gurdwara set in Tarantan is a phenomenal piece of architecture. The Sarovar, if you haven't been there, is, is huge. <laughs> I don't know even how how much time it may have took to set that up. But a leprosy hospital is being set. So engaging at the same time at these all of these different spheres of like what I had told you earlier, uh, medical sphere, establishing a hospital at Tarantan. Um, right on the main, what's called the GT road, um, Guru Arjan Saab is doing this. He's developed further the economic centers, all of that going on. And then he has um, this, this uh, issues with the political elite of the time, the, the relationship issues. We're not going to go into the reason for the martyrdom and Shaheed and the Sartaj, but the institution of Shahidi is also Guru, Guru Arjan Saab's um, uh, gift to us. So until this day remains so part and parcel with the Sikh culture. Uh, Jinnah, we, I mean, for each Guru, we could spend, we could spend like, a, like a whole hour on it. Um, but on Guru Hargobind Saab, may I ask you, um, what is the one or two things that you know about Guru Hargobind Saab, either a story or a phrase that comes to mind about Guru, Guru Hargobind Ji? Miri Pidi, of course. Anything else? Other than Miri Pidi. Bandi Chor, very good. Anything else? Good. Miri Pidi, Bandi Chor, those are the top two that will always come, of course. So he, Guru Arjun Saab, uh, sorry, Guru Hargobin Saab is also having this, this, um, um, you know, uh, clash with the religious elite of the time, well, at least an encounter with the religious elite of the time, but definitely the political elite of the time. The word Satcha Patsha in the context of the six calling their guru as Satcha Patsha actually started prior as well. Um, prior from Guru, um, it is known by Guru Arjun Sahib time and even Guru, guru Ram Das Ji. Um, but we all know the um, Bandi Chor, Miri Piri, the, the engagement with, with Jahangir. I love to share the story of what's called today the Akal Taksab or the Akal Bunga at that time. Um, very interestingly, our historians tell us that it was Guru Hargobin Saab himself, by Gurdas Ji and Baba Buddha Ji, the three of them took on the project of creating what we know today as a Kaal Tak Saab, all, all by themselves. And Guru Arjun, Guru, remember what Guru Arjun Saab did when he, uh, when the inauguration of the uh, Ad Granth, the first Granthi of the time was Baba Buddha Ji. Now Baba Buddha Ji was known to be, a, 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 he's obviously a Sikh from the Guru Nanak's time. And he was the one who was training Guru Hargobind Ji to be a warrior. So, Guru, Guru uh, Baba Buddha Ji was the one engaging with the Sangats and you know resolving problems. If you if you delve into the story during Guru Amar Das Ji's time as well, so that kind of the political slash kind of emissary of the Guru in, in those type of uh, arenas is Baba Buddha Ji. But guess what? He gets the responsibility of knowing the Granth, being the Granth, uh, being the Granthi. Uh, 
Bhai Gurdas Ji is the scholar, the philosopher, is also uh, penning his own Bani, but is the scribe of the Guru Granth Sahib. He gets established, okay, you're going to be taking care of the Akal Bunga. So the, 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 the Gurus, not forcing their Sikhs to take on like maybe quote unquote uncomfortable roles, but putting them in positions so that the holistic nature of the Sikh is developed is phenomenal. And, and, and this, is, this is what I remember of, of Guru Hargobin Saab at that time as well. So the Akal Bunga, Akal Takht establishment and how he then organized that Guru Hargobin Ji, in addition to all of the other uh, stories we know about him, uh, I think is worthwhile. Um, any, okay, Guru, who was after Guru Hargobin Ji? Guru Harai Saab. Guru Harai Saab. What do we remember about Guru Harai Saab? Quickly, a few phrases and a few, few points. Anybody? Mm, not much about Guru Harai Sahib. Very good. Not very good. I mean, very interesting. So Guru Harai Sahib is known as the compassion one. Uh, animal hospital. Yes, you got it. Like a zoo or a protection of animals was was a trait of Guru Harai Sahib. Guru Harai Sahib uh, in, in, in the stories... Uh, by the way, Kiratpur Sahib, where Guru Harai Sahib was, was living most of his years, was established by Guru Hargobind Ji. Kiratpur and just the structure of Kiratpur is very environmentally friendly and very conscious of, of kind of natural resources over there. Um, so so that, that connection with nature, connection with, with uh, um, um, animals uh, uh, and er herbicides, right? Medicines uh, in the herbal garden of Guru Hargobindji, uh, Hargobindji, well known. Guru Hargobindji asked Guru Hargobindji to always keep with, with him Baiso uh, Korsava, like 2200 horsemen, always on the ready, but no encounter with the political uh, elite from, from like a military perspective, even though he was fully ready. There was an encounter um, or a summons of Guru Har Rai Ji by, by Aurangzeb at that time. He sends his son Ram Rai, his emissary, but as a result of knowing how that, how, how Ram Rai, um, you know, dealt with the, the sovereign of the time, he, there was an excommunication director. So, so Talk about strict guru, right? Not just not just Guru Gobind Singh Ji at the time. Um, it it is it is well known that Guru, guru Har Rai Ji was was the compassionate one, but when time was when it was needed, when it was required, um, that there's there's like protocols that, that that need to be established. So this is also a family. You could, one can say it's a family feud, but it's beyond a family feud, right? It's it's the it's a pantic uh, issue that had to be resolved uh, that Guru Har Rai Ji um, takes on. Okay, next is Guru Har Krishan Ji. What do we know about Guru Har Krishan Ji that may not be common or or that you do know? What's the most common thing maybe that we know? Smallpox. Smallpox for sure, right? But the reasoning why is, is so uh, phenomenal to me, right? By this time, by the way, so as we're seeing that there's lots of institutions that are being developed and the engagement of the Sangat with the Guru is getting much closer. Um, there's, there's lots of, um, you know, like the Guru, in, in Guru Arjun Sahib's scenario, right? The, uh, there was, there was the Delhi six were, were giving advice to the Guru, don't, don't have that relationship with Chandu. In the, in the time of Guru Hargobind Ji and Guru Har Rai Ji, the Sangat was very involved in the day-to-day -day affairs of, of the Gurus. What's phenomenal for me um, is the last days of the Guru. He had so much faith in the, in, in the kind of the responsibility of, of the Sikh Sangat at that time that he did not name the next Guru. He just gave them a hint that the next guru you must recognize in the village of Bakala. So um, I base this not on, I mean, it's all obviously my, my own opinion, but also others, like uh, especially this, this one book that I like to, it's a, it's a small pamphlet. It's called, I have it right here, The Growth of Responsibility in Sikhism by Teja Singh. 
where he says that until the 10th Guru, when the Khalsa gets the Guruship, there's a constant development in the responsibility of the Sikh Sangat at that time. So Guru Har Ji, with clarity of mind and thought as a young child is, so first of all, the age uh, thing gets destroyed by Guru Har Hare Krishnanji, right? Uh, but is putting that faith into the Sangat as well. Um, and we, we, we know the story about being called into Delhi and, and, and uh, smallpox, et cetera. Um, I'm being told that we have a, just a few minutes left. Um, the next gurus are Guru Tegh Bahadurji. Uh, one thing that I want to point out that Guru Tegh Bahadur's uh, name is the, the warrior and Teg means sword, but uh, this was a name that was changed when he was young by Guru Hargobindji. He was the son of Guru Hargobindji, and the name was changed because of, again, the idea of spiritual and and uh, uh, warrior um, is not just an uh, attribute of Guru Hargobindji or Guru Gobind Singhji. All the gurus had, had, had a similar one. Uh, I'm not going to go into this because I think we're going to be talking about it, but one of the things to take away in the aspect of Guru Gobind Singh Ji is when the call came in 1699, uh, the, the call came all over South Asia, wherever the Sikhs were, had been established. And those Sikh communities had been established at the time of Guru Nanak. None of those descendants of those Sikhs had ever know, had, had ever their, their ancestors had, had become six because of Guru Nanak. Guru Gobind Singh Ji had never visited those locations where the Panj Piyari came from or where the other six communities came to Anandpur Sahib on that day. So at that time, one thing that I would take away is that all across, the six of the time did not distinguish between Guru Nanak and Guru Gobind Singh. For them, when Guru Gobind Singh Ji was asking for the heads, it was as if Guru Nanak was asking for the heads. And it came from Guru Nanak Sahib's Bani, his Joto Prem, Kilan Karchao, Sirhat Tali Gari Miriyao. So doing the courage to take and make into reality Guru Nanak Sahib's call of giving the head and bringing it to, uh, bringing it to um, fruition or, or real life in Vasakhi of 1699 was the, the gift of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. And it was done with that in mind that there's no distinction between Guru Nanak all the way to Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Um, I, I put this together and this is what I wanted to mention to you. So these terms that each one of these uh, core values that were expressed from each of the Guru is not in isolation. It comes from a contemporary of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Painandal in his writing called Ganjnama. So, when we look at guru guru personas the 10 gurus even though there is a highlight of each core value um, this is all this is just guru uh, uh, by nanlaji expressing kind of a focus area or a or a core value of each of the gurus but the gurus are all one so if there's any takeaway that we want to take away from this this session over here is the gurus were one but the breadth of their contribution in their lives um, were many to the level of uh, cities established by so many of the gurus. Yes, Guru Har Rai Sahib, Guru Har Krishan, Guru Gobind Singh Ji had the, the, the needs of time wasn't there to establish cities. So they are the breadth of the, the, the spiritual um, you know, uh, gifts that they are providing to the, to the six to all the way to civil civil society and establishing of cities that's the breadth of their contributions for us and in history so taking those models and applying them today is really is really what we need to do so this idea that the gurus are all one is again uh something that let's go back and let's go back and say it with this this conceptually where does that where does that even come from this also comes from our Shabbat, right? Always go back to the Shabbat. If if the that word in Punjabi is Guru Guru Granth Sahib, because for Tite, this idea does it make sense? Does it make sense that the Gurus were really one um, on the touchstone of Gurbani? Like what what is our uh, what are the 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 guidance from Gurbani? What is the wisdom from Gurbani in that case, right? And again, 
guru persona or guru shabad or whatever form of guru it is that this always comes from the one jot and jot oha jugat sai sehkaya per palatiya so among the gurus the divine light was the same the methodology was the same the only thing that changed was the kaya kaya is body and this is a direction to us from guru granth sahib so um, I know I rushed quite a bit, as I said, that for each guru, we could have spent probably an hour. Um, and I actually have in, in uh, other sessions spent you know, on, on a per guru basis. But the takeaway is that looking at the lives of the guru is a purpose, just like delving into Shabbat has a purpose. And then the third, the Shabbat, the historical lives of the guru, and then like the contemporary, how do we, how do we take those messages? The, the Shabbat gives us the wisdom and the way we have the, the thought process uh, around it. The history of the gurus at that time gives us a model of how that thought process was put into physical effect. And then based on these two, you know, knowledge of these two things, maybe we can then apply that into our lives today, not just at a personal level, but at a community level and, and, and a world level as well. Um, so I'll end with that inspiration again from uh, Sadar Kapoor Singh, and this is what will be covered in the next session with Kulbir, is that there, there is very distinct evolution um, and, and development of the 200 plus years of, of the Guru history that culminated in 1699. The last Sikh Guru sternly proclaimed that in all the Sikh Gurus, it was the same light and the identical spirit that has historically and successfully manifested itself. And that although the mortal frames change, the identity of the spirit, the light remained intact. This is literally his interpretation of the, of the, of the tuk that we just shared. After the 10th Guru, this light has been deposited in the Sikh scripture, the Guru Granth Sahib, and the spirit continues to operate on the historically permanent mystic body of the committed six, the holy congregation of those who followed this light, which is the Khalsa. So this is a, a, a excellent uh, essay to read. It's called Phenomenality, Phenomenality of Sikhism by Sadar Kapoor Singh, which is, which is really the point, I think, of this session over here is that it's a 10 gurus, then their the, the light of the 10 gurus and the body of the 10 gurus continues on even today for us. And, and that's what we're going to cover in the next session. So sorry to rush through some of the gurus, but I think you got a good picture of like, take the episodes of the gurus lives and see how we can relate to it. Just like we take Shabbat and see how can we can relate to it. Take the episodes of the gurus lives and the guru six around them and our overall history and try and engage with it so that we can just improve our relationship with Guru, the one divine light. Thank you. Thank you.